Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Michael McKinson. Mikey the problem, as he's known to most people in the boxing world. Um, fresh off the latest victory in a 19-0 career to date, uh, Martin Harkin, second unbeaten op- fellow unbeaten opponent in a row. Um, that was on yeah. Sunday night on the MTK show. Did it pan out pretty much as planned? Did anything surprise you in there against him? Um, no, we, we knew he was going to be dangerous. Uh, he, he was a big puncher in there. I did feel for his shots a little bit. But like I said, like every single time I'm getting matched with these opponents, I know that I'm leagues above them, levels above them. But I'm put in a corner. I'm not. I can't pick and choose who I'm fighting. You know, he was unbeaten. He was dangerous. But I believe I'm the best fighter in the UK, and I had to beat him convincingly to to cement that. You know. You've picked up a couple of kind of uh, governing body belts, if you like, or sanctioning body belts: the WBC silver, the WBO European. Do you feel yeah. you've been forced down that route to an extent because you haven't been able to get those big domestic fights? Yeah, if, if these guys don't want to fight me, I've just got to, I've just got to take any opportunity I can get, and and that's why I've I've took risks early on in my career up to now. You know, that was my seventh seventh fifty fifty, um, on paper. You know, so I've had to take risks more than. Um, the average well away if you look at the, the rankings but I'm, I'm ranked really high and, and, and it's all come off it's all worked out well you know like I had a look my last five opponents have a combined record of something like 73 wins four losses something like that yeah it speaks for itself doesn't it like I'm the realest well away in the UK <laughs> yeah I mean it's hard to argue given the recent form and the quality of opposition have you ever been kind of put forward as a, like nominated for English or British either eliminators or the actual title? Nothing, nothing. You know, I've just had to. Uh, I didn't get a penny for my first ten fights. Um, I've just every, every opportunity that has come my way. I've just without even asking, like what the deal was or anything like that. I've, I've had to say yes. Every every single fight. That has been asked of me. I've said yes, and I've beaten with flying colours. So there's not really much more I can do my end um, to to get that to get one of the big names or one of the big fights on the big stage. Now I've done everything asked of me and more. So um, got a great management team. Um, so it's all down to them doing their doing their thing, and hopefully they can secure something big. If not, there's only four names in Britain that I want. And if I can't get them four names, I'm happy to push on the WBO route or push on like an international route and, and, and just go go that way. Who, who are the four? I'm obviously going to ask now. Um, Congo, Kelly, Ben and Jenkins. Um, obviously, there's Khan, but I don't think Khan will fight again. And Brooks coming down uh, to, to Walter again, but he's obviously world elite. Um, so, so it's them four, and if I can't get them four next, I don't want a British guy. Uh, I, I'm happy to move on internationally. And that looks to be what Conor Ben's doing, certainly at the moment, fighting uh, for Mella. Um, Josh Kelly, we've been told his next fight will be his Avanesian, but I don't think that'll yeah. be until next year now. But Jenkins yeah. Congo, if that goes ahead for the British title, and there's no reason to think it won't, they're both with the same promoter, there's every chance, I guess, of you fighting the winner, or, or do you think you might be shut out? Um, well, I see Jenkins is uh, may get a fight with Taylor. Oh, okay, for the, um, Taylor. For, for the eliminator. Jenkins is Esuman. Oh, Esuman. Yeah, sorry, that's right. Yeah, um, but I'm happy to jump straight back into the, like like Jim now and fight Congo before Christmas. I want that fight. Uh, that's why we've we've called him out, and there's been a. He hasn't really replied to anything on, on social media, but we've made noise to make it clear that we want that fight. Um, it's all down to him now to to see what he wants, if, if he does want to um, chase that Taylor fight uh, or or fight me. Like These guys can't say they're the best fighter in the UK until they beat me, that's a fact. It's often been said that Chris Congo, like yourself, is an avoided fighter. Is that what makes it an attractive fight for you? If he's avoided and I'm calling the fight, he ain't that avoided, is he? <laughs> I'm, I'm screaming for the fight. Uh, 
He's a, I believe out of all of them, he's the most dangerous opposition for me in the UK. Um, he's flying, but he's only had one proper fight. He, 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 he dispatched Luther Clay in good style as well, but people are forgetting of, of being in the deep end for a few years now. Every fight I have on paper is a hard fight. And every single time I've come through with flying colours. This guy's this guy's new to the deep end. Do you think at least some of the reason that you're so avoided is that awkward style you've got? You're a very hard man to beat, at least from the eye test. And you've got guys in the past who've had similar issues. Junior Witter as an example, who was often yeah. avoided, and, and fight Harold Graham, of course, as well. You know, do you feel you've fallen into that mould a little bit? Yeah, probably. Do you know what I'm best at? I'm best at making good fighters look terrible. Yeah. And and nobody wants to look terrible. Do you know what I mean? So so that's why I'm avoided. Um, you know what I mean? But like I said, I've been knocking on the door for a long, long time. They can't call me a, a prospect anymore. I've been a pro six years and and three and a half of them years I've been at, at title level. So I, I've been knocking on the door for a long time now. So it's only a matter of time I get what I deserve. And if you don't get one of these um, British fighters that you'd really like to fight, you're number eight, I think, in the WBO rankings, but that was before your most recent fight, so you could have gone up yeah. further since then. Yeah. Do you just so keep targeting people above you? Yeah, 100%. Like, I'm the highest recognised Brit in the WBO rankings. Um Still without a WBO title. Now, I ain't got a WBO European anymore, so they still recognise me. They still rate me as the best Brit. Um, so who knows where I'll be ranked next month if I move up them rankings or whatever. But I'll I'll just clear up them like that that them rankings one by one if, if these British guys don't want it. Um, everybody knows how hungry I am. Everybody knows that I'm like calling for these big fights. You know, I've been in boxing long enough to to deserve these fights now. So. So, yeah, I've got full full trust in MTK to guide my career and the best way that I've got no... Uh, I'm, I'm happy with how they've guided my career as, as, as of yet, but I'm ready to be let go now. I mean, MTK, I've got to say, have been kind of a godsend for a fighter in your position because you are, for a lot of fighters, very high risk, low or yeah. medium to low reward. But yeah. they, they've kind of took a bit of a a punt on you, they've got faith in you and they're building you up and it might not be an issue, do you know what I mean, that these fighters are avoiding you, you'll still get to where you need to go. Yeah, they've got their work cut out, cut out on me because I am avoided, so it's tough for them to get me to fight and I, I am a bit of a diva as well. I do <laughs> nag and nag and nag. Um, this year, I, I've given Lee Eaton a bit of an earache to be able to cement a fight because obviously, and I'm, he managed to sort me out that unbeaten guy Martin Harkin um, so I'm happy at the moment uh, everything's going as planned but I'd like to get back out as quick as possible um, like, so who knows but uh, but yeah well, I'm, I'm excited to see what the future holds Yeah I think um, one of the guys ahead of you in the WBO ratings is Castillo Clayton and he's fighting for an IBF interim belt this weekend so presumably yeah. he'll move out of those rankings so you'll be going up at least one um, place at least yeah, yeah, he's the Canadian, isn't he? Yeah. Did he have the WBO International? It's a good question. I'm not maybe. sure. Oh, yeah, I think maybe that might be vacant at the moment, unless people are fighting for it. So, so yeah, there's there's lots of possibilities. Um, I don't really know where, look, where we're gonna go from here because there's there's so many possibilities. So, I'll sit down and I'll have a chat with MTK and I'll, I'll find out what is next. I'll give him a week's a week's breather from me, and then <laughs> I'll start nagging again. Well, you you want the Congo fight? He's in the WBO top fifteen as well. I think there's only you and him. Uh, Lewis Crocker might be the other one uh, that we know of in the in the top fifteen from these um, aisles, if you like. So that if that does come off, that fight that you're chasing, that could be an eliminator, perhaps. Possibly, we're both two good unbeaten guys. Um, well, I think he's the most dangerous fighter domestically, and I think Josh Kelly is the most talented, you know. Um, but I'm right there in the picture, and I believe I can beat both of them guys. So I just want what I deserve, my shot, um, because I, I definitely do deserve it. And just before I let you go, I know you're, you're pressed for time. Um, 
you're a problem, but you're very popular, <laughs> which is which is a, an interesting one. But now I am. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just want to ask you, you said you're the highest ranked Brit in the WBO rankings, which is interesting because Kel Brook's challenging for the WBO title, of course, against yeah. Terence Crawford. Well, now, he's he's not ahead of you in the rankings, but um, how do you see that fight going? It's it's a big ask for Kel coming back down to 147, especially to take on Crawford, who I believe is pound for pound up there. Um, so I, I personally think uh, Crawford beats Kel Brook. Fair enough. Well, I was half expecting you to sit on the fence. I should have known better. I don't sit on the <laughs> fence. I'll speak what I think. Good stuff. All right. Well, I'll let you crack on. Um, but really appreciate your time. And um, fingers crossed, we'll have a you'll have a big fight to announce soon, and we can have a chat again. Yeah, brilliant. Always available. Nice one, mate. Cheers, mate. Take care. Speak soon. See you later. Bye. -bye. Bye.